that out there we go uh, fill that out and place it in the offertory plate later in the worship service uh, then on the back of your bulletin you will see several things happening in the life of our congregation uh, the first of which is that we are having a Lenten lunch celebration immediately following worship today it will be downstairs in the social hall and is a potluck and all are welcome to participate and join in that then this week is Holy Week, and so we will be having a Good Friday service here in the sanctuary at 6 p.m. Uh, and then we will be having two Easter Sunday worship services, a, ser um, a sunrise service at 6.30 a.m. on the church front steps outside, and a traditional service here at 10 a.m. Uh, both worship services will have Holy Communion, uh, singing and prayers, and the ability for us to celebrate uh, the risen Christ together. Um, and then you also see that we are beginning to schedule volunteers for helping to park cars for Festival International, which is the last week of April. This is the biggest fundraiser that our church does, and so we really need everyone's help if you are able uh, to sign up for one or more shifts. Um, we have an online sign-up genius where you can sign up, and we will also be putting a printed out sign-up sheet as well by the elevator door. So if you want to go ahead and mark your calendars and get ready to sign up or invite friends and family to help us so that we can make sure this year's fundraiser is a success as well. But those are all of the announcements I have for us this morning. So let's center ourselves in this space and prepare to worship God on this Holy Palm Sunday.
Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, rejoice, for the Lord is in our midst. The journey has been long and sometimes very difficult. But now the Lord comes to us in victory. Jesus rides into Jerusalem and into our hearts. He comes with joy and hope. He comes to set us free from fear. Blessed is the one who comes in the Lord's name. Hosanna in the highest. I invite you to remain standing as we join in our opening hymn, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. Would you join me in our opening prayer as printed in our bulletin? <clears throat> God of goodness, we call out to you in times of isolation, of loneliness and despair. We know that you are with us, and yet still the journey is difficult. Remind us in these moments of the people you have placed along our way. Open us to this day your love in through the webs of our relationships and in the simple and good enough moments that fill our days. Amen. Would you turn in the back of your hymnals for our affirmation of faith found on one, I mean on 881. Page 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. For this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, let us take a few moments of silence and reflect on the week ahead of us and reflect on just what it means to us in our individual lives. Let us pray. Almighty God, our most holy one, as we begin the celebration of Holy Week and the journey towards the power of the cross and the victory of the resurrection, we ask for your guidance. We thank you, Lord, for sending your son to pave the way for our lives to be set free through Jesus' death on the cross. Help us, Lord, not to follow after all the voices of this world that we hear every day, but to press in close to you and to hear your soft whispers to us and to seek after you and after you alone. Lord, as we begin this week, we pray for all those who feel that their lives are fragmented or broken, including our own. We lift up to you, Lord, and we pray for all those who may be hurting this day in any, in any way. And guide us, Lord, in the ministers of healing, in the ministry of help, in the ministry of the love that you have to offer, not only for those who may be hurting, but also, Lord, for ourselves. Help us to seek out and live in the atmosphere of your most generous love that's offered to everyone everywhere. All this we pray in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, as we pray together the prayer he taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For those of you who haven't met Judy and Lynn August yet, they have been worshiping with us for the past few months now, I would say, uh, and they have decided that they want to make um, their membership within our church official and join us. 
And so they are coming in from other, um, well, Lynn is coming in from another denomination, and Judy is transferring her membership from another United Methodist Church. And so um, I will ask them the traditional uh, questions of our faith as they transfer their membership to us. So Judy and Lynn, as members of Christ's Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, respond, we will. We will. We do. And as members of this congregation, will you both faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? If so, respond, we will. We will. We will. And church, we ask you a question as well when we have members baptized or join here in our congregation. And so members of the household of God, I now commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And you respond, we give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation, of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And so church, I'm so thankful to be able to present to you our newest members of Judy and Lynn August. Let's welcome them. In. to come and greet them uh, during our potluck after worship if you haven't met them already. And as they get seated, I invite our children to come forward for our children's message. Good morning. <laughs> so y'all did something special this morning. What was it? Confirmation. Well, confirmation. Yeah, y'all are in the confirm. <laughs> the palm branch. Yes, <laughs> you're doing the motions. Yes, the palm branches. Y'all came into the sanctuary waving the palms when we sang our opening hymn. Yeah, because today's Palm Sunday, and so it's a Sunday where we remember when Jesus came into Jerusalem. And the people were so excited about Jesus coming, they kind of threw him in an impromptu parade. Have y'all ever been to Mardi Gras parades before? Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. So it was kind of like the excitement of a Mardi Gras parade with people kind of lining up and down each street. But instead of floats coming through, throwing beads and toys, it was Jesus coming through. Yeah, on a donkey, Jesus coming through on a donkey. And they were, what were the people shouting? Do y'all remember? Hallelujah. What's, there's another H word. Hosanna. Yeah, the king has come. Yeah, they were saying Hosanna, which means save us. So they were so excited because they saw Jesus as a king that was going to come and save them from their enemies. But the people were a little bit confused because they thought Jesus was going to be like the other kings that they knew. That he was going to come in and through force and violence, he was going to put down all their enemies and save them. But instead of Jesus coming in on like a big war horse with armor and a helmet and a shield, he came in on a little donkey. And he preached peace instead of violence. And so the people were confused by that and some of them got angry and that's why later in this week when we have our good friday service we're going to talk about jesus going to the cross and that people were so angry he was arrested he was put on the cross he was killed and then we celebrate of course on easter jesus being resurrected but i think about palm sunday and how the people expected jesus to be one way and he ended up being 
the total opposite. Yeah, completely different. And how sometimes maybe we expect Jesus in our lives to be one way. Maybe we expect Jesus to answer our prayers in a certain way or make things happen in our lives in a certain way. And we get confused or maybe even angry when the opposite things happen. But ultimately, Jesus did save the people when they said, Hosanna, save us. Jesus saved all of us. He just did it in a way that people didn't expect. And he actually saved us more than the people could have ever hoped for. And so whenever you all are in your lives and maybe you get upset at God or Jesus or you think things should happen one way and they happen another way, I want you to remember that we worship a God who sometimes does things bigger and better than we can even imagine, even if we can't see it right at that moment or second. So let's pray together. God, we give you thanks for sending Jesus. We give you thanks for the excitement of Palm Sunday. And God, we also give you thanks for the message that sometimes things in life happen that aren't as we expect. And God, you allow us to be angry and confused or sad or hurt. But God, you also sometimes do things far greater, far bigger than what we could ever hope or dream or imagine. And so, God, just remind us that you are with us always and that your love surrounds us everywhere we go. And for this, we give you thanks in your son's name. Amen. All right. Thank you all for coming down. And as our kids and students head back to their seats, I invite our ushers to come forward to collect our morning tithes and offerings. Let us pray. Good and gracious, God, we give you thanks for all that we have received in this life both our financial and material uh, blessings, but also, God, just your love and mercy that surround us always. And so, God, we ask now that you receive a portion of these gifts and blessings back from us so that together we, too, might participate in the bringing of your kingdom here on earth so that all might come to know your great love and grace for themselves. We ask all of this in your son's name. Amen.
Please be seated. Jesus instructed his disciples to bring him the colt of a donkey that had never been ridden before. As he entered Jerusalem, crowds shouted, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Considering royalty, they cut branches from the surrounding trees and laid them before his back. They threw their coats down before him so that his royal feet would not touch the lowly earth. And everyone in the city was moved by his presence. And some asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered, Jesus. quickly the shouts of Hosanna fade away and were replaced with mumblings and criticism. The chief priest, threatened by Jesus' popularity, made plans to do away with him for good. As Jesus approached his last few days of life, he celebrated the Passover with his dearest friends and disciples. He blessed the bread and dined with them. He tenderly and lovingly washed their dusty feet as he has prophesied of his own death and resurrection. And although they witnessed these examples of his great love and compassion and heard him predict his coming crucifixion, 
the disciples did not understand the gravity of his word. After sharing the Last Supper with his disciples, Jesus and his closest friends went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus prayed to his Father that he might be spared his brutal death that awaited him, yet he willingly submitted to God's will. Soldiers, along with a crowd of armed and angry men, arrived. Alerted by a kiss of betrayal from Judas, they arrested Jesus. His trusted friends fled as he had told them that they would. Alone and forsaken, Jesus faced a mock trial where he was savagely beaten, scorned, and sentenced to die. His mother and his disciples looked on in grief as the Son of God was nailed to the cross.
how great the heart of God the Father, who sent his own Son to earth to pay the price for our sins. How great the love of Jesus, who willingly suffered and died, so that we might spend eternity in God's presence. When we look upon the cross and see Jesus suffering our punishment, we're moved to respond with a heart full of love and adoration for our Savior and gratitude to God. People of God, as we prepare to enter into Holy Week, as we prepare to journey to the cross with Christ, going to the darkest places so that our souls might be ready to receive the light that comes with Easter morning, let us go forth as a people called by God to shine that light forth in the world around us each and every day. Let our spirits, having been, been filled with these songs, with these stories, go forth to pour into others so that all might come to know the love of Christ. And so let us go forth with the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. <laughs> 